do. Hi, welcome to Meet Me for Coffee. Today's guest is Gina Nicole. She's an intuitive reader along with a feng shui practitioner. So with that said, welcome Gina to Meet Me for Coffee. How are you doing today? So good and I'm so happy to be here. I love our synergy and thank you for having me. Thanks for joining me. I am so excited. So I want you to share with my guests what it is you do and how you incorporate all this fantastic mingling between the angelic world and the feng shui part? Yeah, I love this question. So my passion is really helping empaths and highly sensitive to ignite their intuition. That's what I really love to do. And I do that through a number of tools. And I also help emerging entrepreneurs to give um, really birth to the heart center businesses. And I work with heart entrepreneurs a lot. So I sort of work in these like two buckets and then I have all of these tools that I've picked up over the past 15 years that are all across the board. Um, but I love guiding people to get their own answers and give intuitive work and understand their intuitive style. So it's kind of, you just, you never know how it's going to look when you work with people. It's just, you never know what's going to, you know, I might bring up um, some clay or something that's coming up as an energetic block. I love working in what I refer to as the cosmic trinity. Um, popularly known as mind, body, spirit, right? But I work with it in a little bit different um, of a way. So yeah, I'm sort of, um, it's just, it's always an interesting journey. You never know what's going to come up <laughs> and in what realm. Right. So how did, how did you get into this? Like what started your journey? What was your pathway? So where it started for me was I was in a marriage that, as you refer to so beautifully, was an energetic hiccup. I definitely, um, it was a, a challenge relationship for me, but I learned. And I had these two very interesting experiences with these people. One that said, you're going to get a divorce. She read cards and she was a functional practitioner. And another person who said, he was a Vedic astrologer that said, you're going to get really sick. Both things happened because I took it in and I believed it. Um, but both things sort of set me on this new path. So I was diagnosed with every autoimmune that you could imagine. I was diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome. I was making a ton of money at the time and didn't want to leave that money. I was really fearful to leave the money. But eventually I knew that if I wanted my body to stop screaming, I needed to do something. So I took a huge pay cut. I was working in the Silicon Valley at the time. I took a huge pay cut. Mm -hmm. work for an acupuncture college to learn more and free up the space to study more deeply with my feng shui master. At the same time, it's always important to acknowledge I had a mom that she did, um, when she was 16, she was hit by a drunk driver. She did cross over. She was pronounced dead and had these experiences where she would be able to tell when people are going to die. And so it really scared her. So at the same time, she was also like, Gina, this isn't safe. I'm not giving you your birth time for an astrology chart. I'm not giving you this information. Like, this is not safe for you to explore. But I was like, but it's helping me. It's the only thing that's helping me. So I was really torn and like, who am I? Um, it was this very, very interesting path. And that is where it all began for me. And I would have never been comfortable letting people know, like, I see spirits, I see angels, I like, talk to dead people at the time so i feel like it was spirit's way of saying here's this very gentle thing you can call it feng shui it looks like interior decorating and then a few years later i had my first angel encounter like in the middle of a client session where there was no denying it and i couldn't i was, I was put on the spot um so that's sort of that's how it started and unfolded and it, it is this path is what finally helped my body to stop screaming right so Exactly. It's exactly an energetic hiccup. That's how they occur. And the beautiful part for you is actually you listened. Because energetically, if you don't listen, you keep having the same, it's like a car losing its tread on the tire and just, right? So totally. And it was so hard to listen. I mean, I took a, I mean, I was missing out on like over a hundred thousand dollars a year. I had to go against, you know, what my, my parents were really believing. I had friends that were judging me. I mean, yeah, like it is scary to listen. It is scary to listen, but I had to just like leap into like full on faith. 
Yeah. And rest, and it was super uncomfortable. And then I needed to figure out eventually, like, how can I let this develop as my livelihood? I, this has helped me. I want to help other people to do it. So then I followed my fear even more. And I was, I had a huge fear of flying. So I followed that fear and I became a flight attendant. Why the H or whatever? I was like, what am I doing? Became a flight attendant, but it was the perfect thing in following the fear because it was the one job that let me build a really beautiful spiritual practice on the side. And this is what I do full time now. Like this is my livelihood. It's how I support my family and I. Um, and so it was, yeah, it was almost like I had to listen to the scary things. <laughs> it's like, and I still do. It's like, what's the next big scary thing or big investment or big, and it's like, I just continue to follow that fear, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. I love that because it's similar to my journey. Like, and I love like the fear. It's like, okay, what now? Like, right. You want to get into the nitty and the gritty and the crap show. Right. But I always know there's magic on the other side of fear every mm -hmm. time. Right. There's magic on the other side of fear. And when you connect and release it, it's really not a fear. It's this innate precedence that gets set upon us by generally our environment usually or ourselves, our inner circle, right? So I see things in waves and vibration. So we have this inner wave. We have our outer environment, the home. And then we have the world, the galactic, and then out, right? So it's this rippling effect. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly how I see it. Too. I mean, I refer to it a little bit differently. I refer to it as the cosmic Trinity. That's where it started in my world, but it's like your earth, human and heaven Lux is as we would refer to it in, um, you know, Chinese culture and feng shui tradition. Um, and your earth is really all about your body and your home. Your human is about your mind and the heavenly realm is about your connection with spirit. And they all three play an equal piece of the pie, you know, okay paying attention to all of those areas. And I do think too, like there is, you know, there's a difference between like following the fear that's like, oh God, this makes me so nervous, but I know that there could be something about this. And I know that it could potentially be okay and bring a big shift versus like, this is really scary. And like, I, I, this is not okay. Like something is not okay. You know, like you really have to lean into your intuition about it. I'm not saying to like follow, you know, to jump into a full of sharks completely unprotected like there's you know <laughs> you don't have to use your intuition with it but yes there is big reward in finding the miracle when you follow it isn't that fascinating i love it um so you've been doing this for 15 years it sounds like maybe a little longer yeah you're that's about right 15 years so is wow. there anything else you want to share with my audience does that just scare you? 15 years? <laughs> I'm like, well, how am I that old? Um, yeah, you know, it's interesting because you say that and I'm like, oh my gosh. And I haven't been doing this full time for 15 years. You know, I mean, it took a minute. And I think people, like I'll often connect with people that want to give birth to their heart-centered businesses. And it's like, well, you know, I'm not going to get, I'm not ever going to give the advice of telling someone just, you know, follow the fear and quit your job and get no money. I mean, you heard what I said, like I became a flight attendant, like I had these little things to be able to give that space. So full time, I mean, I've supported myself with this practice for um, oh, about five years as I've been, you know, I've been full time. So that, that's kind of like the meantime, the flight attendant It was like in the meantime, right? You have to do something in the meantime to get your footing, to get you in the real time of what you're supposed to be doing, right? Because now mm -hmm. spirit has you and you know that. I totally, totally. 100%, right? Yeah, totally. Like they say you have your nine to five and then you have your five to nine. Like what are you doing on the, you know, what are you doing after hours? So it does take, it took a minute. And I think as empaths is highly sensitive, we get so discouraged and we all came here with such a blueprint, like, do our work and do our thing and we can get so discouraged because it doesn't happen immediately i work with a lot of entrepreneurs that um you know i have a mastermind and we focus on working on the chakras of their business and oftentimes i can see where people get so frustrated because they want it to happen like right now and i'm like you're the, you're completely and i don't believe that spirit does time but it's like you're completely forgetting you know that it can take time like yeah this this can be a five to nine right now like what do you got, you know, what do you have going over there? So I know for whatever reason, this is, this is coming to me to share. Um, 
but yeah. So when you said that though, 15 years, I'm like, Oh my gosh. But I wanted to be very clear. Like I haven't been, you know, doing this full time for 15 years. Um, but it's it, true. You have to protect your garden and give it space and time. I always say kind of the same thing, you know, babies aren't built in a day. They take time and space. You have to, and then you're nurturing them, you know, they're nurtured in the womb and then you got to nurture them out forward. And they're yeah. a part of that intricate little finite vectoring, right? The streams. Yeah. I'm, saying, I'm going all cosmic. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. I love it, Bill Jill. It's so fun. Um, but yeah, and the other, you know, the other piece to that puzzle is it's like, you know, it, it doesn't just, like, there is no such thing as an overnight success story. Uh, find me one. Like, give me one. Any overnight success story has had five to 10 years, usually seven of like learning. And I don't want to call them failures, but learning and like falling flat and having to get back up again, you know? So if you're watching this and this is, you know, speaking to you, yeah, it takes time, but don't stop. Like don't stop. Cause we're all here with this really beautiful blueprint to, to do something, to shift the world, to change. And nobody can do it like we can do it, you know? So it's good. One of the things that, um, that I'm really devoted to, like where my practice really starts, is because people come to me because they either want to, you know, make some shifts in their business and they want to do some things with their business in terms of the chakras of their business, the energy of their business, even if they don't know that that's what they want. That's how they find me. Or they want to connect with their angels, connect with their guides, connect with their loved ones in heaven. And the one thing that I will say, like where it always starts for me that we don't give enough acknowledgement is frequency. And, you know, it's, it's so overused, you know, for said, like raise your vibe, keep a high vibe, keep it high vibe eat, but like really truly like I am devoted to that I have um, a certification that I teach in a mentorship and we are always always so like going back to square one if something's not working out like what are you doing to your vibration what do you and I have all these little like tests and tricks like something that I would recommend everybody do like you'll see it around I have one hiding back here like around my house everywhere I have lemons everywhere because lemons help to understand the frequency of your space and your space is linked to your body in my world um and so you want lemons to really age well so this is something that everybody can do um put the lemons out and see if they start to get like spotty or white spots or black spots or if they get moldy and if that's the case something needs to shift and your home is connected to your body so like something needs to most likely shift in both which is also connected to the mind and the human experience so this is a great test that i always tell people to start with i mean we have lemons <laughs> because i'm always paying attention to what they're doing but you want them to age this one's about five months old and you want them to age where they just you know they kind of darken and eventually the seeds will shake and they sound like little maracas but this is a really good test it's like before you do anything make sure that you have a super high frequency make sure that you're doing things in your mind body spirit food home and garden pets everything to keep a high vibe and that's a really great test it's a great test you know because it yeah. and it's a simple test right yeah so, so yeah, energetically, what's interesting with the lemon, like I first thing in the morning, I always drink warm lemon water. Of right course. out of the, yeah, right? My, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it really is about frequencies. And just real quick, yesterday, because I work at, I work out a lot. And, um, and that's for my mind, right? I work out like the body needs movement. And I actually, through vision, I keep seeing, um, like to heal a lot of the mental challenges in the world, like, um, PTSD or uh, depress, whatever is movement. These people need to move, like get running, run your ass off, right? Like you have to move because it gets those crickets out of your mind. Oh, and it's great. just one aspect, right? And it's exactly what you said, you know, we need solitude. We need to eat properly. It's your nutrition quotient. Um, movement is huge. Your breath is huge. It's all these natural things, but you have to put them in this perfect ball to maintain your yeah. synchronicity, right? I agree. There's a framework. I actually have um, on my web, I have like a, because this message is so important. I have like a three hour masterclass series. It's broken up into three parts and it's, you know, it's 
earth, human, heaven, there's a, a different and there's a quiz for each one. And um, it goes through frequency is an acronym. So every letter and frequency means something else like F is feng shui or is rate of vibration. Anyway, so there's three hours worth of content where I just share in a masterclass series like these are things that you can do. These are ideas that you can do it, because you're right. I mean, it's not just, it's not just one thing. I mean, you can't just like spill a lemon out and expect it. Like you have to devote your time. So like if you're, you know, you're watching this for somebody who like wants to grow your practice, you want to connect with spirit greater, you want to do the work, you want to give birth to your, you know, you're trying to figure it all out. Pay attention to frequency. Like that's the easiest thing that we can do. And food is a huge one. Google, um, uh, the frequency food pyramid, I, we do not pay enough attention to it. I mean, it is so important to add, you know, like I love that you drink lemon water and you're super high vibe. And that's the thing too, like you're, we are going to naturally draw in the things, we'll naturally be drawn to the things that where we're vibration, is, where our vibe is, you know? So like you're high vibe, you're gonna be attracted to things like lemon, goji berries, spirulina, like all of the high vibe foods, all the high frequency foods. But if you're not, you're attracted to like the crap food, like the junk food. And then the challenge is to get out of that cycle and how do you break it? And it can be hard. So you have to pay attention to it. You have to take the steps to do it and stay accountable. And that's really like, I devote so much of my time with, uh, to do that with people because it's hard. It's really difficult to start an exercise regimen, to break old eating patterns, to, but then once you do it, you like never will go back. <laughs> right. Right. It's so true. So true. So yeah, I just love that because I have friends who always start. And I, like I said, like, I think your new year starts on your birthday. So yeah. it cracks me up when people want to start this new resolution, January 1st. Well, that's great if your birthday is January 1st, but it's totally like getting a system reboot. Like there's things I'm very aware of, obviously 24 seven, whether it's, my nutrition quotient, my exercise routine, my breath work, my sleep pattern, like my solitude. Like I, so this might get a little heavy, but uh, so this week or I've, this is like the time and space when I was in my accident and through my coma and I am having like a hard time having a leg on the ground per se, right? And I, I'm floating 24 seven. I'm out into the galaxy, to the star crystal. Like it's in, been really, really intense for me. But the fact that I'm aware that that's where I'm going and shifting and all this magic is happening, you know, it, I've, it's, I don't know how do we explain it to the average Joe, but my girlfriend just the other night was like, Tanya, where are you? You're not here. She goes, I know you do this, but I've never witnessed it. <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm barely here <laughs> because yeah. it's the frequency, right? The frequency you frequent and mine's obviously more galactic than it's like, I, it's the galactic enterprise kind of thing. And it's sometimes it's difficult. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like, it's difficult. And you, are an expert at this. Like, you know this, you master this. This is your thing. Like you are in your juice. This is your jam and it's difficult. So, you know, I mean, they're like for other people and for a lot of the world, like it's when it's not your jam and you know nothing about it, it could get really cray. I mean, things get so hard. So it's so important to have like a support system and to understand. I mean, just even listening to something like this, to know that you're not alone. Like I'm, like my face, I'm laughing. I'm like so bright and shining because I have this like light. Have you heard of these lights? I like keep it on me all the time. Where it's like my happy light because I'm in the Midwest and I'm depressed because there's snow. And I have old traumas around the holidays or yeah. this holidays right now. You know, so it's like I have to do things to to counteract those things. You know, so it's like so good that you know that about yourself and you can do the things to you know with frequency to manipulate it but my gosh like for the majority of the world that doesn't we no wonder why we're just like depressed and in our phones and crazy you know it's just like people don't know what to do it's really to be so unfortunate um so yeah i love that you're i love that you're like so in tune i'm dizzy as i'm saying that but i love that you're so in tune and like at least you kind of you're like yeah you're right i'm not here but but you also <laughs> know the steps you know the steps to take 
Oh, absolutely. So super excited. So um, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, I'm going to thank Gina again, once for, again, for joining me for Meet Me for Coffee. I'm going to have her, um, all the ways you can find her in the end notes. It sounds like she has an amazing master class that's probably worth your time and your energy to participate in. Um, is there anything else you want to share, Gina? I kind of went off on my little tangent there. No, I just love it. Thank you for having me. Thank you for um, doing that. This is just fun. Like I just, yeah, I just love our conversations and I love being able to just flow with spirit and see whatever wants to be delivered because you just never know when we do these things, right? You never know what's going to happen. Oh, um, isn't that the truth? You just never know what's going to flow. You never know what's going to happen. Let, you know what I do love? I love cards and these are sitting here looking at me. So I'll choose one card for everybody. These are actually my own cards. Um, I created some like feng shui cards that have angel messages on them. So let's just choose everybody. That's Ooh, bad. this is oh, going to be fun. I love this card. So this is actually on this card is my little grandpa, my papa. Oh my gosh. I love that. He's crossed over. I don't know if you this light. He's crossed over now, but yeah. This is the transformation card. And I always ask people with this card to, to know what butterfly you go to. Like, do you notice a butterfly on there? Because there's right. one there and there's one there. And if you notice the one that's under the rainbow, it's, it's more about being called to do more human work. And if you notice the one above the rainbow, it's the other side of the veil where you're being linked and called to transform more heavenly. Um, but this card is all about releasing control and trusting the timing. It's the transformation card. And in your home, the feng shui tip around it is not to be afraid to make changes and shifts. And if something's bothering you, you don't like it, change it. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I love that. So I'll have uh, the links to all of this in the show notes for the description. And if you have any questions for Gina, just reach out to her. She's totally amazing. And I'm so excited that she's a part of my tribe. Ashe, thanks for joining me.